How's it going, everybody? So today we're going to talk about a two-minute scalping strategy. Now, what I mean by a two-minute scalping strategy is using two-minute candlesticks and talking about the patterns and the levels that I like to trade around. And the thing that I like about this is, first off, using two-minute candlesticks slows the price action down a little bit. A lot of times on the one-minute chart, you know, your mind can be overactive and then you think everything is a setup and a lot of times you can get chopped out. I know that's happened to me. So a time frame that I really like is the two minute chart. So that's why it's gonna be the two minute scalping strategy. And a couple takeaways from this are gonna be precise entries. The way that I like to break this down is waiting for consolidation, using those two minute candlesticks and having stops that are pretty close. So that way the loss is not big, it's small risk for potential big reward. And as far as those precise entries, it's taking those entries around the technical levels that I like to trade around every single day. Those levels are gonna be pre-market high and low, prior day high and low, prior day close, high of day, but after some consolidation. And I had a typo, but I just changed it. And low a day after consolidation. Consolidation is the key here. Cause just going for random high days and random low a days, those can fake out aggressively, especially if the stock gets there pretty quickly. It's the consolidation that's the key. So that way the risk is tight, where if it doesn't work, you don't get hurt too bad. And some good examples that I'm gonna go over today are gonna be on Roku, Tesla, and Nvidia. And before we go over those examples, one key important factor to all of this is that this kind of strategy, you know, scalping at these levels, it's gonna work best when there's a fresh news catalyst on a stock and it has momentum behind it, elevated volume, a lot of eyes watching it because it has that potential for follow through. The probability is gonna be a little bit better. Just randomly taking these trades every single day is not gonna have a good outcome. So it's all about focusing on those stocks in play and then really waiting for consolidation or some sort of technical catalyst on the daily chart where stocks are breaking out to the upside or breaking down to the downside. So that way you go with the flow and you have momentum at your back. Because if you just go about doing this every single day, you get chopped up. So it's gonna be the context in which you take these trades Having a news catalyst, a technical catalyst, or a strong trend to the upside or the downside is gonna have better results. Now let's get into the first example, and this is gonna be on Roku, November 2nd. The reason why this was in play is because it reported earnings, and it had a gap up on earnings after being in a downtrend. It gapped above the 9 EMA, the 20 SMA, the 50 SMA, and the 200 SMA on the daily chart. So there was the potential for continuation but it's not about just buying this because it's all about waiting for that pattern on the two minute chart and then trying to find precise entries with small risk and potential big reward. So now that we know Roku is trading to the upside, it's all about trying to figure out what it's gonna do off the open. If we look to the right, this is gonna be a two minute chart with the VWAP and the 9 EMA. To be honest, using these indicators is kind of irrelevant. It's more about the levels and then obviously looking at the candlesticks but when looking at the view up in the 9 EMA, it's kind of a push in the direction that this is currently going. That's how I see it. These light blue lines, the one to the upside, this is going to be pre-market high. The one to the downside is pre-market low. So let's break down what happens off the open. Roku has a strong push. And even though this broke pre-market high pretty quickly off the open, you know, I don't want to take that trade. It's just too quick for me. I want to wait to see what happens. Fails at pre-market high, pulls back, holds pre-market low gets back above VWAP and the 9 EMA, has that push to the upside. So we get back above pre-market high. And now this is the key factor, a tight period of consolidation with a technical level above. So it's holding one technical level, pre-market high, this blue line right here. It's also above the moving average. It's above the VWAP and it's trading just below high a day. High a day is 72.90. So what we're looking for is a potential continuation above those highs a breakout because it has the catalyst. A lot of breakouts aren't gonna work, but there's news behind this. And it possibly trapped shorts off the open and then buyers stepped in and it remained strong. And then also look at this tight consolidation. That is a nice sideways period of consolidation just below the high of day. And then what happens? It has a very nice move through that. But let's break down the precise entry and the things that I am trying to work on. So above this consolidation, Call it 7260, even above this little prior candle high, 7268. I wanna to try to get a good entry and then have tight risk. So what I'm gonna to try to do is get long right around this area. The moment I see this candle, 
have a pretty strong push off the 9 EMA and clear out some of this consolidation to the left, if I'm pretty good, maybe getting long right around 7270, 7280. And if I wanted to keep risk really tight, a two minute scalping strategy using these two minute candles, I'm going to risk off the low that I got in on 7237. Or even worst case scenario, if my risk tolerance is a little higher and I don't mind having that stop be a little bit lower, the low of the prior candle, so 72.10. So if I got an entry at around 72.70, we're talking 60 cents risk off this prior candle low, or the low of the candle I got in on, which call it 72.40, 30 cents of risk. So the thing with this is sometimes you can get stopped out quick, but those losses are never big. And then when they go in your favor, that risk reward can be fantastic because if I'm good and I get that entry around 72.70, expecting the high day clear out, it gets above high a day on volume and then it stays above high a day. Look how far this goes after the fact. Now, nobody knows how far a stock is going to go, but if you look at the risk reward here, you know, you're only risking anywhere from about 40 to 70 cents. And then look at the move after the fact. This trends all the way up to 79. So we're talking six points potential. Now, this is obviously an outlier. It's not going to happen all the time, but this is just a good example of it. Risking 30 cents upwards of about 60 cents to potentially get about $6. That is great risk reward. Now I am a scalper, I'm never gonna be holding that long, but even if it's playing a two to one risk reward or three to one risk reward, this gets there pretty quickly. You know, risking that 30 cents to that 60 cents and pretty much within a handful of minutes, you get that outcome for what I think is a pretty solid trade. Now let's go over another example. And this one is gonna be on Tesla from November 3rd. Now, the market had a very strong trend to the upside. So just going with the flow of the overall market trending to the upside. Also, it was gapping above the 200 SMA on the daily chart, which sometimes can be the start of maybe a momentum move to the upside if it's gapping above it or a move to the downside if gapping below it because I know a lot of traders watch that 200 SMA on the daily chart. So just knowing the overall trend has been to the upside, got above the 9 EMA, gapping above the 200 SMA, clearing out some resistance from the left, that maybe we could have more upside. It's all about just waiting for what happens off the open. So now looking to the right, this is a two minute chart on the intraday. This upside level right here is gonna be pre-market high. So what does Tesla do? Pushes right into pre-market high on that first candle. That's a little too quick for me. I don't wanna go for that. I wanna wait for a pattern, wait for some consolidation, pulls back a little bit. And then look at these bottoming wicks. Could not stay below 221, knowing the trend is to the upside, then eventually gets above the 9 EMA in the VWAP and it has this form of consolidation from call it 222 to about 221, knowing that pre-market high is above, even though it kind of took it out, also knowing that high of day is above at 222.88. So we do have some technical levels. If we can clear those out, maybe we have more continuation to the upside. And then what happens after? We get a nice, strong, bullish candle off the VWAP and the 9 EMA. Here's where I want to try to be pretty good with entries. So this consolidation right around 222 to 221, the moment that I see this strong candle, I want to try to do a good job at getting in pretty quick. So let's say I do pretty good, I get in quick, and I'm in long at 222, anticipating the high day break and maybe further continuation. What I want to do is if I want to keep risk pretty tight, risk off the low of the candle that I got in on, which is 221.80. So we're talking 80 cents risk. And if I'm willing to take on a little bit more risk off that prior candle low, which is call it 221, even though it's 220.99. So the tight risk is gonna be 80 cents. The little bit more is gonna be $1. And for Tesla, that's pretty good. You know, risking a point on Tesla every single trade, I think is a pretty good risk tolerance because it does move a lot. And then what happens after the fact? You get a nice push through 222, and then it ends up clearing out that pre-market high again, even though it kind of did it. But really that next technical level would be high of day. Can we get above high of day and stay above it? And that's exactly what happens. And then once it clears out the high a day, has a very strong push up into 226. So we're talking about an 80 cents to potentially dollar risk max. And then you get that strong move to the upside from 222 up to 226. So potential four point reward for only 80 cents to a dollar risk. Now, obviously it's hard to catch the entire move. So even if it's focusing on a two to one or a three to one, this plays out pretty well. Now let's do the last example on NVIDIA. And this really is just an example of going with the flow of the overall trend. When stocks get going in one direction, especially if it's to the upside, then those breakouts have a better percentage of working out. And this is an example of NVIDIA going sideways for a chunk of the day, for a large portion of the day, and then it clears out those highs 
with the overall trend of the market being to the upside, you have wind at your back, and this has a nice move to the upside. So this is what NVIDIA looked like on the daily chart, even though it is extended to the upside, it's above the short-term moving averages, clearing out a lot of resistance to the left. The overall market has a strong move to the upside, just going with the overall trend. When you follow the trend, the trend is your friend. Those breakouts can work when everything is going up. So what happens to NVIDIA off the open? This light blue line is pre-market high. It gets there pretty quick off the open, a little fast in my opinion, and then just kind of dances around that pre-market high. Fails to hold above it, pulls back, but never even gets back to low a day. And this is pretty choppy. I don't see any real opportunities here for focusing on this specific kind of setup. Dips below VWAP a couple times. Maybe it traps shorts thinking that it's going to roll over because it's extended to the upside. And then what do we do? We get back above this pre-market high, even though it was dancing at this level numerous times. And then we finally have a tight period of consolidation. Consolidation is key with this. Letting a clear channel form. And that's what makes the breakout a little bit better, in my opinion. So here's how I see playing this. Now the technical level would be to the upside. High a day is 443.44. So we're looking for possible breakout of high a day, going with the trend, and then just taking it for a nice scalp and looking to get that good risk reward. And that's exactly what happened. And I see potentially two good entries here. Just depends on how aggressive I'm trying to be. But this candle off the 9 EMA, once it clears out this little consolidation high right here, if I was pretty good, Maybe getting long right around 4.43. If for some reason, I'm a little bit more patient. I want to wait for this candle to close. And then once we start to push off that, anticipating that high day break, 4.43.44, this is where the risk can be really tight. Because if I'm good and I get in this candle, long 4.43, risking off the candle that I got in on, the low of that, the low is 4.42.43. So we're talking about 60 cents risk. If I want to go off the low of that prior candle, 442.15, talking about about 85 cents risk. And then if I wanted to wait for that next candle to open, and then we get that push up into the high of day, the low of that candle is 443.10, keeping that risk pretty tight. And that may seem too tight on NVIDIA, but this is all about making sure that those losses are small. So depending on the entry, I would think the max risk that you have on NVIDIA would be about 85 cents. And for NVIDIA, that's pretty good. And then what happens? You clear out this little consolidation area right here, you clear out the high a day, and you get a nice move up to 445. So it's not a huge move to the upside, but when scalping on NVIDIA, and especially when you're risking anywhere from 30 cents to about 85 cents, that's decent risk reward because you get that two to one, three to one pretty quickly, and that's what scalping is all about. So trading breakouts and breakdowns and all these patterns on the two minute chart, it's all about the context in which you're trading it. And I think consolidation after a decent amount of time, that tight period of consolidation is key when it comes to these patterns and this strategy working. So those are some good examples of a two minute scalp trading strategy. I appreciate you watching the video. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.